Hello beautiful people and welcome back to the anti-aircraft vehicle series. From now on these videos will only contain two vehicles, mainly because I think uh, the other ones got too long and these are just easier and faster to produce. And once again I will look at the vehicle's firepower, mobility and armor, if they have any, and look at how all the parts and bits and pieces all fit together as a whole. First up we have the famous and infamous Wirbelwind, country Germany, crew 5, armament 4 20mm autocannons, armor maximum 80mm, speed 39km an hour equals to about 24 mph. Tier for tier the Wirbelwind is one of the best, if not the best, anti-aircraft vehicle in all of War Thunder. With its four 20mm autocannons, nothing is safe from the Wirbelwind once you are in range. Doesn't matter if it's a tank, medium tank or even a heavy tank. The vehicle itself is based on a Panzer IV, which also means that it can keep up with pretty much everything that Germany has to offer at that BR. For an anti-aircraft vehicle, the armor is actually pretty nice. From the front, you are protected with an 80mm front plate. However, that is quickly reduced to only 20mm on the sides. The turret itself is protected with 16mm of armor plating. Now that is enough to stop light machine guns or rifle caliber machine guns. And there is an opening directly in front of the gunner. So we can get lucky with light machine gun fire directly into that opening and kill him. Heavy machine gun fire though will have no problem of penetrating the 16mm and the crew will definitely not be safe then. The turret of the Wirbelwind is also very impressive. Even when stuck you get access to 42 degrees of traverse. And if you spade it out you can get up to 60 degrees of traverse and that is pretty crazy. And that translates to you pretty much never having to worry about not being able to keep up with planes even if they're very close and on top of you. Another big feature of the turret is the gun's ability to depress 10 degrees and elevate 90 degrees. And again that means it doesn't really matter how your hull orientates, even up or down slope you'll never have issues with keeping up and tracking the planes. With the four 20mm cannons you have access to four different kinds of belts and three different kinds of ammunition. The default belt first has an armor piercing incendiary tracer shell, followed by a high explosive fragmentation incendiary tracer shell. And the two next shells are also the high explosive ones. So only every four shell has the ability to actually penetrate armor. The next belt is a belt that only contains the high explosive fragmentation incendiary tracer shell and that is only to be used against planes. It has no armor piercing effect at all, so never use this build against tanks, it's completely useless. The next build is a build that contains armor piercing incendiary tracer shells, and this is the first build you get access to that can really kill other tanks. Now the last build, which is called Panzergranate Fertig, is a mix between high velocity armor piercing tracer shells and armor piercing incendiary tracer shells. Now this is the most effective belt. With high velocity armor piercing tracer shell you get access to 64 mm of armor penetration at 10 meters. You basically never run out of ammunition either, you have 3200 rounds with you. With so much ammunition it's very easy just to take a mix of both high explosive ammunition and then the armor piercing ammunition with you. Each ammo belt has 80 rounds in it. Now that may sound impressive and you have access to a pretty long burst but you have to remember that those 80 rounds are for 4 guns and that again means 20 rounds for each gun. And here's another big advantage with so much ammunition with you. So each time you fire your gun and let's say you have 20 or 10 rounds left just go ahead and fire them so you're ready with a fresh build of 80 rounds for the next engagement. You have to remember that this is not instant reload either, you have around 4 seconds between uh, bells and that is enough to get you killed if you suddenly run out of ammunition in close quarter. When you use this gun against aircraft you actually need a lot of lead, probably more than you initially think. 
but the advantages here you can just tr pretty much draw a line in front of the aircraft with those rounds of yours and chances are that it will just fly into them. Now when you're fighting tanks it's important that you actually draw the same line across the hull or the turret of whatever you're attacking. Since you shoot so fast some of the bullets will never be registered once they hit the hull if you just keep aiming at the same spot. So just pretty much just draw a line across the hull and the turret and you'll be fine. But the biggest effect with this method is probably that you're going to hit multiple crew and modules in the tank. So they're just hammering at the same spot or at the same crew member over and over. Playstyle wise, either stick at control points or choke points or stick with your teammates at the front so you can help with that with some close air support or in a pinch act as a tank destroyer. You can easily kill barrels and other modules within light and medium and even heavy tanks. Now when fighting heavy tanks as a brave soul that we all know that you are, only kill the barrel and pretty much just run away screaming because your gun will not be able to penetrate the side or front of NKV-1 for instance. So in general stick with the medium tanks, you will have no problem of defeating the side armor of a T-34 or a Sherman tank. And as you can see, it doesn't really matter who you are. Even the mightiest of the mightiest Twitch streamer like Benny V is no match for the 20mm cannons of the Verbal Wind. If you want to have a good time on Twitch, then go watch Benny V's stream. They're very fun and entertaining. Here we have the CIS-43. Country, USSR. Crew, 4. Armament 137mm auto cannon, armor 15mm max, speed 35km per hour, equals to about 21 miles per hour. So this is 43 plays very different from the verbal wind I just looked at. Firstly, it's not fully tracked, it's only half tracked. That also impairs how fast it is in terrain and in water, snow and deep sand. It's also much less armored than the verbal wind. The hull only has 10 mm of armor protection and that's just enough to stop light machine guns. Heavy machine guns will kill it very fast. The turret has a 15 mm front plate protecting the gun Otherwise, the size is only 10 mm thick, and again, only good enough to protect against light machine guns. Usually half tracks in War Thunder are pretty quick, but this is 43 is obviously it's actually pretty slow, with only 34 km an hour, and that's not a whole lot. So you'll have issues with keeping up with the much faster T-34s. The chassis itself is also kind of bad. It has a tendency to wobble and especially if you get up to speed, it's almost unbearable to look at. You almost get seasick just looking at it wobble around. It's probably due to how tall and narrow the vehicle is. As ugly as it is to look at, it's really not all that bad. The vehicle has four crew members, which means that even if you lose one of them, you'll still be able to replace him and continue the fight and the driver and commander sit somewhat protected in the driver's cabin and they're not as exposed as the gunner and loader but that's a good thing Stock, the turret has a rotation speed of 21 degrees a second and when aced out, it can get up to 30 degrees a second It's not great, but it's not bad either considering how large a caliber weapon it uses The cannon can depress 5 degrees so that's pretty standard and pretty bad, as all other Russian vehicles have the same issue. Elevation wise, you can get up to 85 degrees. It's not as good as a verbal in 90 degrees, which is pretty much pointing straight up, but it's pretty close to it. The cannon itself is a 37mm auto cannon. 
and you have 260 rounds with you. Now 260 rounds is actually not a lot of ammunition, especially because it's difficult to aim and use if you're not experienced with those larger caliber weapons, since the fire rate is also pretty slow with only 160 rounds a minute. It's not as slow as some other larger caliber weapons, but it's not great either. One of the redeeming factors for this Russian half-track is the fact that you can rotate the turret 360 degrees. Some of the other truck-based anti-aircraft weapons from Russia has not that luxury. The turret sitting so high in the chassis also has some good sides and bad sides. Of course, you're easier to spot at a distance because you are so tall. On the other hand, sometimes you can uh, poke the barrel over a ridge line or rock and be able to use the gun where you wouldn't be able to do so on the other anti-aircraft vehicles. With a 37mm cannon, you get two different kinds of ammo and three different kinds of belts. You have your regular high explosive fragmentation tracer shell, which has pretty much no armor penetration, but it's not meant to have anyhow. It's just meant to be used against planes, and it's great at that. Then you have a very potent armor piercing tracer shell, which can penetrate 71 millimeters at 10 meters, and that is actually pretty damn nice. The three build configurations are actually pretty standard. First, you have a mix between the two ammo types. The default build first has an armor piercing tracer shell, then comes the high explosive one, and then it just switches around again. The second build is pure anti air with only high explosive ammunition, and the third build is only used against tanks which means that it only contains the armor-piercing tracer shell. Now, with the lower firing rate of 160 rounds a minute, that also comes along with the fact that you need to be better at aiming in order to kill a plane. On the other hand, even a single 37mm high-explosive shell is enough to rip off a wing of a bomber. The best way to use this 37mm cannon against planes is actually out at a longer range, you don't need to rotate the turret nearly as much, because once it's getting closer, you'll have issues with following them with the slower rotation speed of the turret. When you're using a cannon against tanks, very few rounds are actually needed to kill a tank. A light tank like the American M24, for instance, won't stand a chance, and you can easily penetrate it even from the front. Otherwise, you can easily penetrate pretty much all German and American tanks from the size of this BR. Playstyle-wise, I wouldn't venture off too far alone. Even though your cannon is pretty effective against tanks, your hull is very vulnerable, so stick to your teammates. Or find a nice hiding spot and do some ambushing against tanks. When you use against enemy aircraft, make sure you don't stand in any high contrast area. Now what I mean by this is look at the colors around you. Try to make sure you don't stand out against the background. So avoid open spaces and hide between buildings, vegetation or rock formation with the same color scheme as your vehicle. Okay, that was about it for this episode. Please comment, like and subscribe. And until next time, have a good one.